Okay, ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He hails from Birmingham. He's 17 years old, stands six feet tall, and weighed in at 82 kilos. He fights out of UTC, and tonight is his debut in the cage. Let's hear it for Cushion Jackson. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. He hails from Slovakia. He's 31 years old, stands 5 feet 11 inches tall, and weighed in at 81 kilos. He, he's an independent fighter, and tonight is his debut in the cage. Let's hear it for Jan Amoye! So once again with the middleweight action here, Cashin Jackson in the blue corner with the black and white trunks against Jan Malik in the black trunks. But Jackson bringing a lot of support with him from the UTC gym. You're right, UTC a massive gym in Birmingham. They're bringing almost tribal level of support with them throughout this, uh, throughout this competition. It's really impressive to see. And that's a nice shot from Malik as we say that. Jackson's got to be careful, it's his debut, but he's got to keep that chin tucked. Malik just pouring out with that jab, trying to negate the range. Worth mentioning at this point, Ben, Jackson is still a junior, only 17. It's phenomenal to think the levels of experience that we've got on these shows where these fighters are coming through and fine on the amateur rules, and it's unbelievable the skill sets they've got at just 17 and 16 and 18 years of age certainly bodes well for the future of the sport it certainly does I'd love to see where we're going to be in five years time certainly five years ago we weren't at this level of amateur competition so an interesting stance from Jackson a very nervy feeling our process his, his, his footwork and, and guard suggests to me he's got a boxing background but he sure can wang a leg up in the air can't he and Malik for me I mean it's the reaction of shaking your head that nine times out of ten means that that kick did register and you just it's a mental thing a lot of the time Jackson looks a very explosive athlete he does it's like a coiled spring it's like at any point and it's that ability to close the gap and come and just create that anti-space as these both these fighters are looking to throw bombs Yeah, we see a little bit of showboat in there from Jackson. Goading Malik. He wants him to come to him. I mean, now the play of a counter fighter we see quite a lot, and there's those strikes. Yeah. Jackson really has got fast hands. And he's settling into this fight. Yeah, I've got to be honest, I don't, I don't know Jackson at all, I've never met him, but I've got to say, he's surely got to have a boxing background. The footwork, the counter boxing, the stance. I think the footwork tells its own story, that's a very good observation. It's not often that you see this kind of, look at that flurry of fists. I was just saying, it's not often you see this kind of advanced, very, very fast footwork. Certainly not at this weight division. Certainly not at an amateur level as well, we've got to remember that. Switching stances quite fluently. There's a nice kick from Jackson. I think you may have hit the nail spot on the head with it, with your alluding towards the boxing background. A very impressive display from Jackson. Malik, to his credit, stayed in there. A very technical first round. So round two about to get underway. Harrison Jackson in the blue corner. Jan Malik in the red corner. I think from the eagerness of both fighters, we may very well be looking at fireworks here. I'd like to see some progression here, Ben, myself personally. I'd like to see, it's a very, very good stand-up game. Very impressive stuff we're seeing from Jackson. I'd like to see him take a risk and, and, and try and go for an absolute finish rather than trying to stalk his man. Look at the look on Malik's face. He almost enjoyed that. I think you're right. I think 
it's clear that Jackson's got that pedigree but it's nothing without the aggression that he needs to close the distance and to make his opponent put, put his opponent excuse me into bad situations Bizarrely, Malik's really enjoying himself out there, isn't he? And Very. Jackson, let's be honest, Jackson has been on the balls of his feet this entire bout. There's a nice combination as well, mixing it up. Often we see with boxers that the, the kicks really are the key to confusion, but he's got to be careful of the low shot there. Yeah, there we Jackson go. seems to complain about a low blow there. He's got time to recover. Leon Roberts there, just giving Malik a bit of a... He's giving him that look, he's not angry, he's just disappointed. And obviously not intentional. Going for that inside leg kick and just caught his man. So often we see it in mixed martial arts. Yeah, we, do, we do wear protective groin guards, but it does happen. I'd like to see Malik get a bit more involved in the action. But easy for me to say that, sat here. Jackson's got, I would say, the fastest hands I've seen of the night. What do you think, Ben? Yeah, very impressive hand speed. I like the way he's linking combinations up, and it shows that he's been training more than just stand-up and more than just hands, because the way that he's linking kicks in quite nicely. But what you tend to find with fighters who've got a real strength in one discipline is that if they're really good at that discipline, they can pick up another discipline quite quickly. Yeah, absolutely. And there's that huge shot coming over the top. That overhand right from Jackson, that's the money shot right there. If he can hoot that one up, that'll be lights out. That's a fight ender, although credit where credit's due, that left-hand jab from Malik did land straight on the chops of Jackson. Oh, and a flying knee and takes him under the canvas. Malik's dazed. That was a huge strike. Jackson... Explosive athleticism with that flying knee, and here's the ground and pound. The shots are coming in. Leon Roberts taking a very close look. Malik trying to survive, and which he has done. He's got an underhook. Malik's got a body locked down and get himself out of harm's way there. But it looks like in this situation, it's just a matter of time. Jackson, if you can. In this situation, it's about landing those strikes, but it's about being calm as well. You can very easily gas yourself out in this position. Yeah, I've got to say, Jackson Jackson did burst out of there like uh, Vanessa Feltz at a cake sale. He was straight on him as soon as he smelt blood. And there's a nice hammer fist to the side. I like how he picked that shot. A very high mount. This is dangerous for Malik. He's really going to struggle, but as the clacker goes, we've got just about 10 seconds. Jackson's got to know if he can put a flurry together. He can't be that far from ending it. Leon's right there. there's the end of the round. What a belter, literally. Third round, and look at that look that is on Jan Malik's face. That's the look of a man that wants to win this fight. Definitely, but he knows he's going to be behind now, and he's got to come forward. Credit to Jackson when he fought, when he landed that big flying knee, he closed the distance, and he was all over it like Bill Clinton on a saxophone solo. Yeah, I agree with you on that one, Ben. Malik's got his work cut out. He's going to have to stop this to win. He knows that. His corner will have told him that. big shot as he comes out. Another shot to the groin. Jackson almost waved it off there. I mean, he had the time, but it looked like he seemed angry almost. Yeah, a bit of red mist there, I think. A bit of ferocity in his eyes. And that's something that, obviously, a very young fighter will learn as he progresses. It's not about taking emotions and that you've got into that cage. It can really lead to be your undoing. I've seen many a man fall because they get caught up in the red mist. So we're still we're still standing. I really would like to see some engagement from both parties. Let's Jackson see what swinging that overhand right, but still that light on the balls of his feet. Jackson circles round. Got to be careful. Nice leg kick. He's got to be careful the way he's circling. That's the correct one. The way he was circling before right, he's got to be, watch out not to go straight onto that power hand. Very dangerous thing to do against an orthodox fighter. But he's doing it right now. Malikom is calling his man on. Both fighters have felt that frustration that the other one doesn't really want to engage. 
That's because they're both absolutely tearing it up with the stand-up whenever they get within striking distance, I think. Uh, I've got to be honest, I think I'll have the same tactic. If someone threw hands as quick as either of those two did, I would not want my head to be there. Another Ooh. shot of the flying knee from Jackson, just missed on that occasion. Looks like he was setting up that overhand right. I mean, that's the punch if he can land it. But to be fair to Malik, he's keeping his left hand nice and high. He's defending very, very well indeed. He's got a fantastic stance. He's got good ring dominance. He's making, uh, he's making Jackson walk around the outside of the ring every single time. Big shot over the top, doesn't quite connect. And Jackson, once again, for me, he's been backpedaling this entire round. Really hasn't come forward and engaged. I mean, could that be the sign of, of fatigue? Obviously, he's in I great condition, but he hasn't really committed to these strikes. No, not this round. I've got to be honest. He's uh, very, very, very counter-fighting um, this round. Terrible grammar there. I apologise for that. It's <laughs> very possible that he could have burned himself out at the end of the last think, round trying to push for that big finish. I think you're right. And there's the end. So we're going to go to the judges' scorecards. I will await in eager anticipation. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of hard-fought action, we go to our judges' scorecards. And all three judges have rendered a unanimous decision in favour of your winner, from the blue corner, Kishan Jackson. Well, let's hear it for a fantastic runner-up. Let's hear it for Jan Amoyek.